I'm now joined by Andy Beatty. Um, thank you very much for joining us today, Andy. Really appreciate your time. How are you doing? You're welcome, Louis. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Strange times, but uh, we'll, we'll get through it, I'm sure. Fantastic. Absolutely. So, Andy, if you just give us a quick uh, rundown of your role at Cambridge United. Very important role, of course. Um, yeah, thanks for saying. Um, well, I've got a couple of roles. Uh, I'm the football secretary, which means um, I look after all the admin for basically for the first team and the players. Uh, so when, when we sign a new player, I'll be the person putting together the contracts and the registration forms and all the paperwork that have to go to the Football League and the FA and, and make sure all the, the player knows what he's signing and um, just collate all that information and then pass it on to the Football League and the FA who then decide whether we can sign that player or not. So um, it's a lot of admin, a lot of paperwork, um, a lot of form filling, but it, it gets me to see the players when they arrive. So I'm one of the first contacts to the club with the player, which is quite nice. So, so I get to meet them all. Uh, and then I just maintain all the records uh, on a match-to-match, week-to-week basis for all the players and, the, uh, and basically the first team squad. So I look after all that. And then I've got another role um, as the general manager, which is to look, basically look after the whole ground. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, we have the groundsman and the assistant, and they'll, they'll look after the pitch. So I, I make sure they've got everything they need to look after the pitch. And we, we in turn, our little team, we just make sure that along with a group of volunteers, the uh, ground is, is spick and span, basically, um, and ready, hopefully, fingers crossed, sometime in the future for when all the fans and everybody can go back, go back in. Um, and then on match days, a um, little bit more involved because we've obviously got all the, it, as and when we can, we've got people in. We'll have lots of stewards and turnstile operators and the ticket office. So I just over, oversee and look after all that just to hopefully make sure everybody has a great match day and it all goes smoothly. Well, that's amazing. So obviously fascinating to, to obviously hear that. And I'm sure obviously for all the people watching, that's that's a role that maybe they didn't even think about before. That obviously it's such an important role to keep everything running smoothly and obviously to work with all the um, all the first team players and that. So absolutely brilliant. But of course, Andy, you haven't always been a uh, been a, a football section general manager. You had a playing career as well. Half decent player, if you don't mind my saying. Um, if you give a sort of an overview of, of obviously your career, both as a player and then obviously how you came to be um, obviously at Cambridge United in, in your current role. OK, yeah, well, you've got a very long memory, if you can remember me. Um, I'm not so sure you can, you're far too young. But, uh, yeah, it's back in the 80s. Um, I, 1980, actually, I joined Cambridge United as an apprentice back in those days. So that's what we call a scholar nowadays. A little bit different, and that back in the day, the apprentice was basically a bit of a dog's body. We used to clean the boots, clean the, do, do the pitch, sweep the stands, do everything, do everything. Um, not quite what the scholars do nowadays, which is probably for the good, that they can concentrate just on football. But, uh, yeah, I joined as an apprentice at 16, so straight from school, and then stayed at Cambridge for, um, for basically eight years until I was 24. And then I left and played non-league in those days because um, I, I got a job and, um, yeah, th I just played then, if you like, the National League as it is then for the likes of uh, Barnet and Maidstone. And then gradually, as I got older and slower, <laughs> I um, progressed down the leagues and eventually ended up in the local leagues around Cambridge playing for the likes of Ely, Soham and Histon. Oh, wow. That's brilliant. And did you sort of, um, with the role offered to you, something you, you worked your way towards or something you thought that sounds interesting, I'll, I'll have a go at that? Or how did that end up working? You mean the role at United? As yeah, your current, current yeah. Cambridge role, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was lucky. I was very lucky. Um, when I finished playing professional football um, uh, and, 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 uh, and non-league well, non football, so in my sort of mid-30s, mid um, I was offered a job 
to um, go to Cambridge and other clubs and basically sit on a phone and uh, talk into the phone all about the game, how basically stats on the game. So when the ball goes out of play or when there's a goal. So when you all watch Soccer AM and Jess Stelling comes on and says, Cambridge, Paul Mullin scored in the 40th minute for Cambridge United. That'll be somebody like me sitting there on a the phone telling him uh, or that organisation anyway, um, that that's what's happened. So I was very lucky. I, I, I kept involved with football, doing all that for a good probably 10 years and very lucky to go to all other clubs. And I was, I was at Spurs for a while and the Norwich. Um, and then uh, because I was always around Cambridge and I knew people, I knew what's, what was what. So when the secretary was um, moving, to, she, she had to move with a, with a partner. I was lucky enough to be in the right place, right time to say, I'd like to do that. Go on, give me a job. So, um, and yeah, for the last five years, I've, I've loved it. Amazing. That's uh, fantastic. I think you can probably describe the, your career as glittering uh, in that. In that <laughs> um, but in terms of obviously a favourite moment playing is, is or, or if coaching or, or whatever, or at CFC or, or doing the reporting, is there is there a moment that stands out for you or perhaps a period of time? Well, when... I made my debut. So I made my debut when I was 20. So um, that would be like 1984. And back in the day, Cambridge were in the, what is the championship now? The old Division Two. And back in those days, there were some very big teams in there. Newcastles, um, Leeds United, they were there, Portsmouth. There were some very big, big clubs that had dropped down from the champion, you know, the premiership, if you like, um, and playing in that championship. Um, and I was lucky enough to, I think my second game was up at Newcastle United. So in front of about 20 odd thousand Geordies. And oh. as, a, as a Liverpool fan, my boyhood hero was always Kevin Keegan. So I was very lucky. I, I played against my boyhood hero, Kevin Keegan. And um, we weren't, we were very, we were a very young side. Back in those days, as it is now, the money, um, the money fell out of football at our level, and we had to rely on the gates of, you know, four, five, six thousand at the Abbey when others were having twenty, thirty, forty thousand. So we struggled. We had a very young side, and we went to a lot of that game. So if anybody can, wants to Google it, you, we held a record for a time. So you can come back to Louis and tell him what, what the record was. But uh, eventually, I'll give you a clue, eventually we won, we won a game. And that was at home against Newcastle United. A uh, young Geordie called Kevin Smith scored a penalty. And I, and I was playing again against the whites of Keegan, Kevin Keegan and Peter Beersley and Waddle. Um, and great names, great players, but we beat them. Little old Cambridge beat them. And, and that stopped them getting promotion in that game. But then they went they went and beat the next team anyway. So they weren't too bothered. But it was a great moment for me and a great moment for the club at the time. Amazing. What a fantastic story that is. And, of course, we, we narrowly missed out on being founder members of the, 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 of course, the new Premier League, didn't we? At, um... We did. We did. And that was in the, like, the generation after when I left, the likes of Dean Dublins, John Taylor's, you know, the John Beck days, we were very close. Playoff final. I'm sure you remember that, Louis. But uh, <laughs> we, we'd come a cropper against Leicester, didn't we? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So, um, obviously, fantastic history in that. So, it's really interesting obviously, to hear, hear from yourself as well, which is, which is brilliant, obviously, for everyone watching. Um, just bring it back to the present then. Um, have you got a best bit about your role that you enjoy the most or something that, that stands out to you as being, being really good? Uh, without doubt, it's um, as an ex-player, I'm very, very lucky that I can go down the training ground, stand next to the players. I don't know if everyone's heard about banter in the dressing rooms, and it's a different, different sort of humour, football humour, and uh, I love it. I love going to see all the players, having a laugh and a joke with them, and then. I'm very, very lucky in that my position means I'm able to go to all our, not only our home games, but also our away games. 
and I, I sit there in a, in a lovely seat in the director's box, have a, have a nice meal beforehand, usually. Not, not these days, <laughs> obviously, unfortunately. It's a little bit different today. But, uh, yeah, usually we have a nice meal and then go out and watch football. Not quite, not quite like how I like it, to be honest. I'd rather stand with you, Louis, on the Habin or the Newmarket Road and cheer <laughs> us all on. But, uh, yeah, I'm very, very privileged position that I, I, I'm able to do that. So that, that's probably my the best bit of my job is, is basically being around the players. Fantastic. No, amazing. It's, um, yeah, there's nothing like football, is there? And obviously to be able to do that for a living is, is an incredible privilege, obviously for myself. And obviously it's amazing. Isn't it? So um, what I'd like to, um, what I'd like to ask you now is a question I'm sure everyone's shouting at the screen. Um, so obviously you, you get to, you're the guy that makes the signings happen, that makes everything happen. How does it work when you sign a player and what's it like being able to deal with the contracts and deal with the team sheets? How does, how does that, how does that work? And how does, what does well, okay, okay. Well, we, I don't, actually deal with the actual signing of those players that's always agreed we have a head of football Ben Strang and obviously Mark Bonner the manager uh, and the, obviously the um, assistant Gary Waddock everyone will have an input into um, who we're going to sign so that's all decided before it gets to me by the time it gets to me I'm, I'm that person picking up the details if you like of who we're signing how much we're signing them for, who from, and for how long. So um, I, I'm just that man putting all that information into a bit of a, basically a form and a contract that goes to then the FA and the Football League to, to, um, to make sure it's all in place, that player's eligible to play for us, and um, it's all well and good. So the hard work, if you like, of recruiting the players, it's not done by me. I like to think I, I, I have an opinion but and I have an input, but no, not really. It's, it's the head of football and the manager and the, and the playing staff. They're the ones who pick all the players. I can't take the glory, I'm afraid. Fantastic. Oh, that's brilliant. But um, like I say, obviously something that so many people watching wouldn't even understand happens or what's behind the team to know what goes on so it's really interesting to hear that and um, in terms of the team sheets and that obviously i'm very fortunate i sit behind you in the office so i get to see what happens but um could you just give us all the players a quick outline of how how that happens obviously who comes in yeah. how that works yeah yeah team sheets well team sheets have to be done have to be done at an hour before the game so um we our kit man get what happens the the two captains from each club, go and see the referee with their team sheet, which is written out on a, an official form. And uh, if the referee is happy, the, the kit man then runs to my office with the team sheet and uh, we input it onto um, a, a sheet and then we print it all out. So the likes of yourself, Louis, and the staff in there, you can't wait to see who we're playing and who's playing. So um, I'm able to give you a bit of an, in, you know, a heads up before it goes out to the public um, mm -hmm. of, of who's playing for us that day. And then uh, that team sheet then will be given out to all the press and the media and scouts and various other people who, who are coming to the, to the games. Um, number, uh, the number I do nowadays is, is not many, unfortunately. So it more in the hundreds when I, when we had crowds, but 50 or so team sheets get put out every day, every day. So. Oh, fascinating. No, brilliant. Like I say, great insights. So it's, it's fantastic to hear it from you. I've just got a couple more questions, if that's OK. Um, first one I've got for you is obviously you must have worked with a lot of players and a lot of, uh, a lot of coaches and managers, but is there anyone that stands out that you've really enjoyed working with or has been really different that perhaps you might come to mind? Oh, good question. Good question. <laughs> Do you know what? Um, player I've always admired and he didn't have the best of times with us because of injury, but, uh, but Barry Cole, uh, he, yeah. he came to us. He was a good, very, very good player when he came to us. But he, he, had, he did have a, um, unfortunately, got injured very quickly. Um, battled, tried to battle through as best he could, but his body just in the end, effectively gave up on him and he, he, he couldn't. But 
he's reinvented himself now as a coach. Um, he's still with us coaching the, um, the, the, the youngsters. Um, and um, I, I liked, I always think what could have been, you know, he was, after we just played Manchester United um, in, in the cut run, we had ambitions to go up the leagues and Barry was, was probably a figurehead at the time to do that. And it all started off so well. We were at the table. He was top scorer. He got injured. And unfortunately, it wasn't to be. But uh, I, I just admire the man for the way he's battled back off injury. And he's such a character. And um, the players, and, and I, I know, will learn a lot from him on the training ground. Absolutely. No, again, fantastic answer. Love, um, obviously, a massive fan of Barry myself. I'll never forget him scoring in front of the NRE. I think there was a time when um, when we just looked forward to the last 20 minutes because him and David Amu would come on and then David Amu would cross it in and Barry would head it in and come and celebrate with us at the end of the game. That's right. That's right. Steve Nidjaway, that's a classic one, wasn't it? <laughs> that's the one. Absolutely. It was uh, unbelievable. But um, just two more, if that's OK. One, you touched on it there, Man United. Um, obviously, that must have been a, obviously it was a great day for the club. I, I came to the game, really enjoyed both games. But for you, obviously working where you do, obviously that must have been a really interesting, really interesting day. Oh, yes. I mean, Manchester United came two months, if you like, into my um, term. You know, I, I started literally two months before. So uh, what a game to have a baptism. It was just, it was just beyond. And the, oh, the what we put together, um, I have to give great credit to our ex-CEO at the time, uh, Jez George. He was so driven um, to put together the, the game. So all the background, the commercial uh, input, uh, just everything about it was so magnified. And it was our one chance to make some, make some money, I suppose, as a club. And uh, he definitely drove us on. We had a lot of late nights. A lot of meetings, um, and it couldn't have gone better to us draw at the Abbey and then to go up to Old Trafford. Um, unfortunately, yes, I, 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 I went up on the coaches like everyone else, uh, and I, I was very privileged. I, I, I went into the uh, boardroom at Manchester United, and uh, and across the way there was Bobby Charlton. So um, very, very lucky, very, very very privileged and very lucky time and uh, oh, what a game what a night what a night indeed absolutely and obviously Josh Coulson having uh, Tom Elliott clear his shot off the line could have been, could have yeah. been a great round but like you say Brad, yeah. uh, must have must have been amazing obviously getting some obviously going to the boardroom and meet the, meet the players and all that as well which is or meet the directors and that as well which is fantastic it certainly was mate oh, brilliant so just very last question again thank you so much for your time today Andy um if you have one piece of advice, either for maybe your younger self or for a young player, maybe in the same position you were when you were coming through, would you have any any um, any words of wisdom you could give them or perhaps even someone wanting to, to make their way into more of the role you're in now, like as a club secretary or something in the future? Um, look, work hard. Work hard. Don't give up. Strive for what, whatever you want to do. Go for it. Try your best. Always try your best. Might not be good enough, but strive and, and work as hard as you can to do to be the best you can. And you'll succeed in whichever way you do, in whatever walk of life. It might not be as a professional footballer, but it might be like me having the next best thing, a job in football. So it, doors will open for you as long as you work hard at it. Fantastic. Brilliant message from club legend Andy Beatty there. So, again, thanks so much for your time, Andy. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.